away. Press your way. She didn't give up. Press your way. You just throw up her hands. Oh, I ain't gonna be able to make it. You press your way through obstacle. Everyone stand to your feet. We're gonna go into the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord will be found in the book of Thessalonica. First Thessalonians chapter number four, verse number fourteen through eighteen. Pastor Andy's gonna read that. First Thessalonians chapter four. Also in the book of Acts. I'm not gonna read that book of Acts. Acts two thirty six. And also in the first chapter of the book of Acts, I will be pulling parts from that. You pray that the Lord will give me the the word to communicate it to the people of God. I don't know how going how God gonna do it, but God's gonna do it. All right, all right. All right. Are we ready? Hold on a second. Let me unplug this mic. This mic to have a feedback. Y'all balance that out. Make sure that's balanced out when y'all. Amen. Are we ready? Let me know when you're ready. We thank you for tuning in to another telecast of True Life Pentecostal Holiness Church, 2909 North Detroit Avenue, Toledo, Ohio, 43610. Our phone number is area code 419-509-5770. We thank the Lord for you. Continue to pray for us, and we'll pray for you. We're praying that the Lord would have you, his way in your life and our life as well. We certainly have a word from the Lord. It's found in the book of Thessalonica, uh, chapter, uh, 1 Thessalonica, chapter number 4, verse number 14 through 18. We're going to ask Pastor Andy Roberts to come and read those scriptures. I will come back and give you a word. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14 through 18. It reads, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Them which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord and wherefore comfort one another with these words. Yes! Hallelujah! Well, we thank the Lord for the reason of the words. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God. I thank you for the words, Lord God, been penned, Lord God, in the book. We ask you, Lord God, to bless, Lord God, sanctify, Lord God, consecrate, Lord God, this word, Lord God. Let this word go out, Lord God. Let it not return back void. Let it accomplish what you have purposed it to be. Lord, speak to the hearts of the people and the minds of the people. Lord God, we realize these are last and evil days that we're living in. Help us, O oh Lord God, to be ready, Lord God, when you come back for us. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Almighty God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I want to use for a subject, if you allow me to use that subject, allow me the time to use it, the greatest expectation. All right. The greatest expectation. The greatest expectation. Many of you have expectations. Some of you did not succeed in your expectations. But many of you had expectations. Because you did not accomplish the expectation you had. 
or the goals that you had for yourself, you decide to just drop them. Drop them. Many of your parents had expectations for you. They saw you as a little child. Said, this child grow up, this child gonna be this. They saw that. Somewhere along the line, they dropped out the failure of your expectation. Many of you had expectation of going to college. You didn't go. For whatever reason, you decided you wasn't going. Many of you had expectation of marrying your knight in shining armor. That didn't happen. So you settled for the second best. Many of you had great expectation in your life. And those things did not come to pass. Many of you had occupation and profession that you thought you was going to go into or enter into. Those things did not happen. The Bible says, truly my soul waiteth upon the Lord. Yes. My expectation is from Him. If you're looking for an expectation, you got to know where to look. Many are looking in the wrong places for the expectation. You're looking in for man, looking through man, the eyes of man. Trying to get your expectation. Those things will not come in many cases through man. Unless God intervened. God provide a way. God open the door for your expectation. Many of you are expecting a check in the mail. Around tax time, everyone looking for that check. Day by day, you're expecting with anticipation yes. that that check is going to be in the mail. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but sometimes on the first mm -hmm. or the third mm -hmm. or the second Wednesday of the month, mm -hmm. you're looking for that check to come through. Whether or not it's through welfare, some type of social services, or through Social Security. Or even sometimes on your job, you want that check to be mailed, mailed to your resident, your address, You're expecting that mailman or that mailwoman to deliver that mail to you. There's such great happiness when you see the check in the mail. There's joy and jubilation knowing that the check is in the mail. So we know how to expect things. What about expecting things of the Father? We look for our Father, we're expecting our fathers to give us something. Our Heavenly Father who sits above knows how to give us good gifts. Heavenly gifts. He have all the resources you have all the tools, you have all the knowledge, you have all the understanding to endow upon us what we are expecting. The Bible said that he will give you the desires of your heart. So you may be expecting things and sometimes when God does not fulfill the expectation that you're looking for, we want to throw God aside. We want to tell God, say, Lord, I just don't believe you're going to do it. Had he not said it, have he not spoken it? Shall he not perform what he said he was going to do? Uh -huh. <clears throat> He's a God that will never make a mistake. Yes. If God said he's going to do it, you can take it to the bank. Yes. God said he's going to heal you, you can take it to the bank. Look for your expectation from the Lord. Yes. God said he's going to bring you out. Look for God to bring you out. Yes. Come on now. God said he's going to heal you. Look for your healing. Start claiming your healing. Start proclaiming.
in your healing because God said it. I don't care if you don't see any sign, God said it's going to happen. Start expecting it. Start looking for it. It's going to come. But I want to deal with the greatest expectation. Lord, have mercy. The greatest thing, prayer is the greatest privilege. Jesus' blood is the greatest chemical fluid. Praise is the greatest occupation. Calvary is the greatest event. Jesus' name is the greatest name. Damnation is the greatest damnation. Hell is the greatest damnation. But the second coming of Jesus is the greatest expectation. We're looking for Jesus to come back and to split the sky. Looking for him to come back. Take us back away to glory. While you are looking, while you are expecting, while you are anticipating, I know they have told you that it's not going to happen. People are trying to predict the time and the season when he's going to come back. They're trying to identify the day and the date and the time that Jesus is coming back. No man knows the time or the hour that the Father has set. Many are trying to analyze the seasons and the time. Many are trying to read the stars and the stellar system and, and trying to see when the Lord is going to come back. Many are trying to write books and trying to predict when God has come back. But the Bible says he's coming back. The Bible lets us know that Jesus led the disciples out as far as Bethany. Bethany being the last city that you got to go through, the last place he led them out from Jerusalem. Being led out from Jerusalem, he told them, said, I'm getting ready to go now and gave them the commandment and gave them the commission. And the Bible says, and Jesus stepped upon the cloud. And the, the cloud picked him up and received him out of their sight. Understand, beloved, that the two angels were standing by. And they said, men and brethren, why stand ye here gazing up? Into the heaven the same Jesus whom you see going up is coming back in like man. Something about the two angels giving us a word telling us that Jesus is coming back. Note that the angels are used in many cases and many examples and situations to bring about the will and the work of God. It was the two angels that came and visited Abraham and told Abraham that God was upset and God was mad. God was angry with five cities. Atma, Zeboim, Belam, Sodom, and Gomorrah. Abraham pleaded and cried out, said, Lord, let me find 50 righteous. Will you spare the city? Abraham talked to God and said, Lord, if there be 50 righteous, spare the city. And Abraham could not find 50 righteous. Got all the way down, he got down, I believe, to 10. Could even find 10 righteous. But the Lord is coming back for a church, <clears throat> regardless of whether or not you're ready or not. He's not going to wait for you to get ready. He's not going to wait for me to get ready. Either you are ready or you're not. Ready or not, here I come. So he's saying here that the Lord is coming back for a church. Without a spot or wrinkle or blemish or 
any such thing. The Lord is coming back to take you and I away and those that who have prepared themselves because he who is coming to take us he will not tarry long I know we've been saying Lord come quickly Lord come quickly but the Bible said except the Lord shorten the days uh, no flesh gonna be saved See the time when people are being deceived and they're loving the tricks of the enemy trick you and to think that you are saved and you're all right and find out you're not all right. You'll be like the five foolish virgins who took no oil in their lamps and when the bridegroom came, the Bible said they told him go out and meet the bride. The bridegroom and, and when the bridegroom came, uh, blessed be the name of God, they, they could not go out and meet him because uh, there was no substance in their life. There was no word in their life. There was no oil in their lamp. Uh, they have gone dry and gone weak. Can I paraphrase this to the dry bones? Uh, the whole house of Israel who have gone dry on the Lord. Uh, you got to keep your lamp burning bright. Uh, you got to keep the word of God in your life. You got to keep your light burning at all times. The fire got to always be lit because you don't want the Lord to come back and you be left behind. Uh, they have a program called No Child Left Behind. Uh, but I come to tell you, no child of God should be left behind. Because uh, God made a way for every person uh, to enter in. Uh, yes. And he said to his word, he led him out as far as Bethany. Uh, stepped up on the cloud to understand that that's how God travel. Uh, the Bible said in Nahum running three, uh, he said the clouds are the dust of his feet. Uh, the Lord travels upon the clouds. Uh, he has the wind and everything at his disposal to, to take him and cause him to transfer uh, and to travel the right way. Uh, oh, the enemy may try to stop you, uh, but I come to tell you, get your house in order, get ready, because uh, the Lord is coming back. Uh, uh, we don't preach this anymore about the great snatching away or the great coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But the Lord is coming back one day. I know you have heard it time and time again. And you think that it's not going to happen. You've been looking with anticipation. And some of you are disappointed because the Lord has not come back. Just because he has not come for you, it does not negate the fact that that the Lord is coming back. Just because he has not stopped by your door and knocked on your door does not mean that he's not coming back. His word, the Bible says, if his word is settled in heaven, whatever God said he's going to do, he is going to do. If God told you he's coming back, he's coming back because God has never lied. He never lied. His word is true. If you are expecting God to do something, you got to look for God with anticipation. The Bible lets us know that Jesus came. He's coming back as a thief in the night. Uh, what you talking about, brother preacher? There are four watches in the night. The first watch of the night starts at 6 p.m. And it goes to 9 p.m. And then the second watch of the night, it goes from 9 p.m. until midnight. And then the third watch of the night, it goes from midnight to 3 a.m. And the fourth watch of the night, it goes from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. You got to remember that Jesus came walking on the water in the fourth watch of the night. He come back as a thief in the night. You don't know when the thief is coming. You have no idea when the thief is coming. He'll 
he'll come and take your property. He'll come and steal from you. He does not announce when he is coming, but he come to steal and to kill and destroy. So he said that Jesus will come back like a thief in the night. And you don't know the time nor the hour that he's coming. But if he's coming in any one of the four watches of the night, I got to tell you, you got to be ready. Because the Bible said the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. He's going to come from heaven and to take us back to glory. Because the same Jesus, who you see going up, he's coming back again. The same Jesus is coming back looking for a church that had made himself ready. It's a wonderful thing to anticipate what God is going to do. Many of you are sitting in anticipation just like the man that was sitting at the pool for 38 long years. He was anticipating being healed and delivered but at the pool of Bethesda. The Bible said there was five porches at the pool of Bethesda. The five indicate the number of grace and death. Blessed be the name of God. So this man was waiting for the troubling of the water. He's waiting with anticipation that as soon as the water trouble, I'm going to jump in the water and I'm going to be healed and delivered. Many of you have been going through some struggles in life and some issues in life. It seems like you can't hold on any longer. I come to tell you, hold on, beloved of God. The Lord is coming back for a church to get a church out of out of a church because the Bible said he shall descend from heaven with the voice of an archangel come on somebody he's going to descend with the voice of an archangel the archangel hallelujah he ascend with the voice the voice of Michael similar to Michael similar to Gabriel similar to Uriel and similar to Raphael. Those are the archangels. He's going to descend like a voice of an archangel. He's going to blow the trumpet. He's going to say, come my people. Help me, Holy Ghost. And the sand here. He's going to blow the trumpet. And when the trump of God sounds, you got to understand that the trumpet is the strongest instrument. It will wake you up out of your sleep. I don't care how bad you sleeping. Some of y'all can sleep through a storm. And the next day you don't know the storm is coming. But when you look at the wind instrument, the trumpet, hallelujah, the trump of God, it is louder than the saxophone, the alto and the tenor saxophone. It is louder than the clarinet. It is louder than the flute, hallelujah. It is louder than the tuba, hallelujah. It is the strongest wind instrument. And the Bible said it will have that penetrating sound that will cause the dead to wake up. The dead going to rise first. And the Bible said that we that are alive and remain shall be caught up to be with the Lord. It is the great catching away. But before you can get up, before you get up, you got to have something on the inside to lift you up out of this ground. The Bible said the spirit that quickened Christ Jesus shall also quicken your mortal body. If you don't have the spirit on the inside, you are laying your dead grave. Come on, somebody. The corruptible, hallelujah. We got to put on incorruptible. The mortal got to put on immortality. We're going to rise. We're going to get up out of here. We're getting ready to move. We're getting ready to go someplace. I don't care who told you. The Lord's not coming back. The angels have already told me. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the voice. Hallelujah. The angels have already 
church, we're going to be out of here before you can even think about it. We're going to be out of here. You can take a second and divide that second up into 60 parts, and that's equivalent to a moment, hallelujah, in the twinkling of an eye, the Lord himself, he's going to split the sky. He's going to say, come my people. Come on, let's get out of here. I got a place for you. You've been faithful over two things. I make you rule over many. You kept the faith, hallelujah. You didn't deny my name. Come on, somebody. I got a crown for you. Hallelujah to God. I want you to walk the streets of glory. I want you to sit down by the river bay. Ain't going to study war no more. My sword and my shield. I done put them in the sand. Ain't going to study war no more. Because I'm getting ready to go home. I'm going home. I got a home on the other side. The Lord himself. The Lord himself. He's coming back again. He ain't sending nobody else. He's going to do it by himself. Because he's God Almighty. Wrapped up in flesh. Blessed be the name of God. He said, I'm going to come back. You're going to be with me for a thousand years. A thousand years. A day in the sight of the Lord. Is that a thousand years? I'm going to reign with him. What am I going to do? When I get inside of the gate, I'm going to praise God. When I get inside of the gate, I'm going to shout. I'm going to shout the victory. I'm going to be in the choir. John, I've already wrote my name in the choir. John, I've already wrote my name in the choir. John already saw me. John said, I saw a number that no man can number. I saw the mighty army. I saw the mighty choir. They was only singing the song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John, so I saw a number. Lord, have mercy. I saw a number that no man can number. What do you mean we can't number? I saw I saw 10,000. I saw a million. I saw a trillion. I saw, hallelujah, a decillion. I saw a septicillion. I saw no decillion. Blessed be the Lord of God. I saw a sex trillion. 26 zeros behind the number. 26 zeros. John said, I saw a number that no man number. Don't you want to be in the number? You can be in the number. Just live for God. Live for God. Have your life all shining bright. I got to quit. But I ain't done. I got to quit. Come on, the greatest expectation. The greatest expectation. When we look up and see him split the sky. And I'm going to come back. I'm going to get lifted up. The same spirit that quickened Christ, mortal body. The same spirit that quickened Christ shall quicken your mortal body. I'm going to be lifted up. Come on now. We're getting out of here. The greatest expectation. You expecting some money? That ain't nothing. The greatest expectation is the second coming of Jesus. When he come back, we're looking for him. We're anticipating. Anticipating. We don't preach this anymore. That's why people are living the way they're living because they don't know it. They don't think he's coming back. He ain't coming back. We've been there. Yeah, they, they said that they preached him when I was a little boy. But he's coming back. Certainly thank you for tuning in to another telecast of True Life Pentecostal Holiness Church, 2909 North Detroit Avenue, Toledo, Ohio. Till next week, just remember, the greatest expectation, Jesus coming back, the second coming of Jesus, is the greatest expectation. Expect him. Look for him. But he's surely coming in Jesus' name. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. Greatest expectation. You can expect a diamond ring. You can expect a uh, mansion down here. You can expect a new car. All you want to. 
you ought to be expecting him to come back. So this is not our home. This is not your home. This is not my home. You call this home? Where folks can steal your stuff? Break in your house? He's got some place where the thief can't break in. Gonna put, your, put a ring on your finger? Gonna give you a robe? Lord, have mercy. Huh. He gonna give you all that and you gonna sit down there by the by the banks? The leaf on the tree is good for the healing of the nation. And you gonna sing in the choir? You may you may not be able to carry a tune. You not be, you may not be able to clap on time. Your timing is off. Don't matter. But what happened? When we get there, everything gonna be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you imagine a choir? And, 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 and listen, nobody directing the choir. They ain't got to have nobody. The Spirit of God. You just come there and it's just say, Hallelujah. Can you imagine that? A thousand voice. Y'all try it. Let's go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all ain't sound too bad. But some of y'all off key, but that's okay. When you get in glory, we ain't gonna be off key. We go all gonna be there. You talk about a beautiful sound. That's gonna be a beautiful sound. Maybe someone heard the word, been touched by the word, want to be saved, want to be delivered, go down in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. That's the only way to get in. He's coming back for those that are ready, not making ready, not trying to get ready. Listen, listen. The bus, the bus. When you go over to the bus, the bus don't care if you're ready or not. When that bus come by that place, you're not at that bus station, the bus pick you up and, and go down. Just go on and go and leave you. You're not ready. I told y'all before, the saddest thing I saw was a woman on a Friday night. She missed the train. She, missed, she was running like everything. They told the man, the train gone. Oh, she just wanted to just fall out on the floor, just pass out. That's not funny. I want to fall out. I felt so sad for her. Because I didn't know the underlying problem. I didn't know the other things. Maybe she had children waiting for her at home. This was a, this was the uh, Amtrak train. It ain't like you would get another a ride. Amtrak train. She may have to wait the next day to catch the next train. Maybe she had children, people waiting on her, husband waiting on her, somebody that she missed it. It was, it was such a sad sight. I told my wife, I said, come on. Make sure we, we don't miss this train. No. I don't want to miss it. No. And that's the way it is with the Lord. You don't want to miss it. No. The Lord is coming. You don't want to miss it. Because he's not going to come back again to pick you up again. not going to go around, okay, you missed the, you missed the, the blessing holy is he that had part in the first resurrection. Second, they got no power. So you got to get in the first resurrection. Somebody said, well, I'll catch the, I'll catch the next one. Some of y'all got the same attitude. Well, I'll catch the next service. I'll catch the next service. I miss the service. I'll catch the next service. Here's a problem with that. The problem is that you don't know what, how God's going to do in the next service. You don't know how God's going to move in the next service. Someone told me one time, said, I said, the Lord, the Lord's been moving. The Lord really moving that. The Lord's been having a great, oh, man, we had a great time. People falling out. Oh, man, well, I'll catch you. I'll catch you the next time. But God didn't come that way the next day. God didn't come that way. So when you didn't, you didn't come that you missed your opportunity of visitation. The opportunity of visitation for the Lord to visit, you missed it. God ain't going to come that way again. God ain't going to come that way. Jesus was passing by, but Zacchaeus went up in the tree. Yes, he did. ain't going to miss this opportunity. Well, he, he might not pass by this way again. Jesus passing by today. This is your opportunity. Will you come? I don't believe in begging people because when you're ready to come, you can come. You don't have to beg people to come come and eat. When it's time to eat, they're ready to come. In fact, they come before it's time. Sitting at the table before it's time. Is there one? Is there one? Should be no talking.
You yeah, should be talking. No talking. This is. <clears throat> Come on, y'all move quickly. You won't pray. You're going to move quickly. Don't look for the next person behind you. You come for yourself. Because the Lord's coming back. He's not coming back for you. Your family, he's coming back for you. Your family don't make it. Your family don't make it. Your family has the same opportunity. That's why he says, save yourself. Y'all come around and pray for him as I, as I do a corporate prayer. Y'all can lay hands on him and pray for him. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you right now. We thank you, Lord God, for these people who have come to the altar, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, you're able, Lord God, to heal, Lord God, every sick body, Lord, every, Lord God, every depressed spirit, Lord, be able to lift that depressed spirit, Lord God, oppress, depress, Lord God, compress, Lord God, you're able to lift it right now, find the enemy right now, we send him to the pits of hell, we rebuke every spirit, Lord God, they're not like you right now, oh God, in the name of Jesus, clean bill of health, oh God, in the name of Jesus, we speak clean bill of health, Lord God, we speak healing, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, the blood of the everlasting covenant. Make you perfect in every good work. Working in you that which is well pleasing in this time. We speak it right now, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus. We speak it, Lord God, by faith, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. We speak it right now, Lord God. We speak it right now, Lord God. We speak it right now, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, God, we thank you. We bless you, Lord God. We lift you up, Lord God. Only you, Lord God. Only you, Lord God. Only you, Lord God. Only you. Only you, God. You're the God of a second chance. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord. We bless your name, Lord God. We bless your name. We bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. Touch it right now, Lord God. Touch him, Lord God. Heal sick bodies, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. Heal, Lord God. Heal, Lord God. You're Jehovah. You're the Lord God that healeth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. 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 Have your way. Protect them on the highways. Lord, let them leave their family. 
family to the Lord Jesus. Oh God, right now, oh Lord, you said except we become as a child, I will not see the kingdom of God. Oh, Jesus, and we'll give you the praise. Come on, give God a praise up in here. Come on, give God a praise. Give God a praise. Amen. Amen. We thank the Lord for the service. We're still in service. We're still in service, so therefore, we have to respect the house of the Lord.